Every athlete dreams of making it to the professional level, of standing on the grand stage, basking in the glory of success. But here's the harsh truth. The journey to the pros is shrouded in mystery. Behind the dazzling victories and shining careers are five secret factors that separate the chosen few from the rest. In the world of sports, ignorance isn't bliss. It's the silent killer of dreams. Many aspiring athletes remain unaware, blissfully training day in, day out, oblivious to the fact that their careers could be slipping away into obscurity. But fear not, because today we unveil the keys to success, the five unconventional factors that could be your ticket to your first pro contract. So let's get started. In the pursuit of greatness, there's often a paradox that goes unnoticed. It's not about hyper-specialization from day one. It's about the unexpected synergies that arise when you broaden your horizons. Enter David Epstein's groundbreaking philosophy, Range. Epstein challenges the conventional wisdom that early specialization is the best path to success. Instead, he advocates for a period of generalization, where athletes engage in a variety of activities before honing in on their primary sport. This philosophy counterintuitively lays the foundation for later specialization, creating a unique set of skills and perspectives. So the first thing you must do in your quest to go pro is find your athletic enhancement. Answer. Take the legendary Rio Ferdinand, former England and Manchester United defender. As a child, while his peers were ridiculing him for pursuing an unconventional interest alongside football, Rio was mastering the art of ballet for four years. And here's what he had to say about this. So you actually started out as a ballet dancer, I hear. Tell us about that. Yeah, I've never been someone who wanted to be pigeonholed in any, any part of my life. I'm from like a, a council estate where ballet wouldn't normally fit. I got scouted to go to a ballet school called the Central School of Ballet, one of the best ballet schools in, in, in London. And I ended up staying there for four years. And to be fair, it's hard, man. It's not easy. It's very difficult, very hard to do. But it was something that definitely helped me in my football career with my poise and my balance. Yes, ballet, an athletic enhancer that seemed worlds apart from the rough and tumble of football. But little did his friends know, Rio was laying the groundwork for a distinctive edge in his game. The poise, balance and fluidity of movement acquired from ballet set him apart in a position where such finesse was unexpected. Ballet was Rio's secret weapon, his athletic enhancer that defied stereotypes and propelled him to become one of the Premier League's greatest defenders. While other bruising centre-backs struggled with rigidity, Rio glided across the pitch with grace that left opponents bewildered and the world's best strikers confused at how nimble this six foot three athletic specimen was. Even the GOAT of basketball Michael Jordan also played baseball and American football at high school. And the legend Roger Federer was trying to become a professional footballer before he eventually settled on tennis. Embarking on this journey of diversified athletic experiences requires a strategic approach. So here are three practical tips to guide you. Firstly, explore diverse activities. Begin your quest for an athletic enhancer by engaging in a variety of sports and activities beyond your primary discipline. The broader your experience is, the richer your skill set becomes. And don't be afraid to do these other ones recreationally. If you're playing your current sport five times a week, it's fine to have something that you just do once a week for fun. For example, a few footballers I've worked with over the past year also do boxing or MMA once a week. Secondly, embrace the unconventional. Don't hesitate to explore pursuits that might seem completely unrelated to your sport. The unexpected can yield extraordinary results. Just as Rio Ferdinand embraced ballet, your unique interest could be the key to unlocking hidden potential. And three, which is a direct follow-on from this one, is just stay open-minded. You should challenge stereotypes and preconceptions. Your journey to greatness might involve defying expectations and engaging in something else that others might laugh at you for doing. Rio Ferdinand initially tried to hide his ballet from his friends, but after a while, he formed the confidence to not care about what they thought because he was carving out his own journey towards greatness. Now, after you found your athletic enhancer, there's a crucial next thing that you must do. And to explain this one, let's talk about the 2018 World Cup winning French squad. Did you know that eight of the 23 players in this squad grew up in the Paris values? Areas known as the gritty suburbs that served as both the playground and proving ground. The likes of Mbappe, Pogba and Conte all held from these football hotbeds, where a rich culture of the beautiful game thrives amidst challenges of poverty and crime. In these suburbs where small concrete spaces become arenas of dreams, the hunger and desire to escape a tough reality fuel the journey to becoming elite footballers. The environment demands mastery of ball control, fostering skills that set these players apart on the global stage. Or consider the tale of Matthew Syed, an ex-Olympian in table tennis. He had the good fortune of living in the catchment area for a primary school in England, where there was a teacher who also happened to be the country's top table tennis coach. The point here then is that in order to make it pro, you have to find your perfect environment. It's not just about the facilities, it's about the culture, the mentors, 
and the unique challenges that shape a champion's mindset. A lot of this just comes down to luck. That is just the unfortunate reality where every single one of us was born at a throw of the dice. We had no control over it. And yes, yeah, some people did roll a double six. They lucked out by being born into the best possible environment for their sport, like Matthew Syatt. But in today's age, because of living in a highly connected world, most of us have way more opportunity than previous generations to shape our environments into ones that give us a much better chance of success. The three main things that pretty much anyone can do to do this would be one, have a detailed plan. Devise a long-term plan for your athletic journey. Identify colleges, clubs, or training centers that align with your goals and strategize how to integrate yourself into these environments. Sometimes you really need to plan years in advance to ensure that you're on the right track. Number two is to make tough sacrifices for better competition. Sometimes the perfect environment may be miles away. So be willing to make sacrifices, whether it's taking long bus or train journeys to get to high level training sessions or matches. Exposure to superior competition can elevate your game and accelerate your development. There are athletes I've worked with who commit to taking a two hour bus ride there and back to training sessions because it's the best environment for them to enhance their game. Is this fun or fair? No, but it's necessary. And then finally, seek mentorship and guidance. Identify mentors or coaches who understand your potential and can provide guidance. Matthew Syed's story highlights the transformative impact of a coach who recognized talent and fostered a culture of excellence. And as long as you have an internet connection, you can have so many mentors today that previous generations just didn't have access to. Watching videos on YouTube like this and from other channels that demonstrate how to perform complex skills or drills is something that I wish I had growing up. It's a golden age of opportunity to learn things that people even 10 years ago didn't have access to. By the way, if I've helped you in any way on your journey towards peak performance, please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. It's free and will help me out a lot because this ratio of the percent of people watching my videos without subscribing. It's embarrassing. It's a disgrace. That's what it is, a disgrace. So thanks for your support. So next up in the things you must do to make it pro is something 99% of people shy away from. And it's no wonder the 1% doing this are those who are going to make it. To explain this one, let's talk about NBA champion Jamal Murray, a man who didn't just train as a child, he embraced his extreme. His dad would make him do wall sits with cups of hot tea on his quads, push-ups in the biting snow, dribble a basketball on ice, and even pick up leaves with his bare hands in the depths of the Canadian winter in order to strengthen them. It wasn't just about physical endurance, it was about developing developing an unshakable mental fortitude that set him apart on the court. Jamal Murray reached the highest level because he embraced key thing three, find your extreme. For Murray, the pressure of crucial moments in NBA games is nothing compared to the pain he willingly endured in training. The extreme became his ally, preparing him for any battlefield, making every high pressure shot just another routine. But it doesn't just have to be borderline physical torture that you put yourself through. No, finding your extreme is also thinking about training habits and routines that no one else around you is doing. Take Daley Thompson, a decathlon legend, who once famously said, I train twice on Christmas day because I know the others aren't training at all. It gives me two extra days. His commitment to extreme training, even on holidays, propelled him to claim consecutive gold medals at the Moscow 1980 and Los Angeles 1984 games. The message is clear, to be extraordinary, you must do the extraordinary. Champions don't settle for the status quo, they redefine it through extreme dedication and commitment. It's about asking yourself, what is the most extreme thing I can do that 99% of other athletes in my sport are not doing that will give me the edge? This question serves as a compass, guiding you towards unconventional methods that can elevate your performance. Tailor your extreme training methods to your sport, your strengths and your weaknesses, whether it's unconventional drills, unique challenges, or just relentless dedication. Find what sets you apart and push those boundaries. When coming up with your extreme, remember that success often lies just beyond your comfort zone. If you ever find a training session or workout easy, then you've stopped progressing. So you need to learn to embrace the discomfort of extreme training, knowing that every ounce of effort that you invest is a step closer to surpassing your competition and making it to the pro level. And this extreme attitude feeds into the next thing, that you must do in order to make it pro. You have to get into your head that less than 1% will ascend to the pinnacle. And to be among them, one must embrace the ruthlessness of competition. While it's important to play fair and with good sportsmanship, you have to realize that there's also a great need to identify, study, and seek to dominate your competition. Because of this, the fourth thing is find your foes. Even the great Kobe Bryant understood this truth at the tender age of just 13. One day he opened up a magazine containing Street and Smith's basketball rankings. He was 57th on that list as the most exciting high school prospect in the country. Was he happy with this? Considering he was only 13, right? And others higher up than him were four or five years older than him. No, after seeing that list, his first thought was, I'm gonna hunt them down. And so that became his mission in high school, to check off every person 
all 56 of those other names and hunt them down, knock them down. That was it. Bryant called this his kill list. It wasn't just a teenage ambition. It was a manifestation of the ruthless mindset required to set oneself apart. In a world where every advantage matters, understanding, studying, and conquering your competition becomes not just a strategy, but a way of life. Even if this feels unnatural to you, you have to create some version of this. It's not just about killing off the opposition. It's more about studying them deeply to understand why they're currently better than you and what from their game can you look to integrate into your own? So take these important steps. Firstly, actually devote time to studying your competition. Understand the full ins and outs of their playing styles. If someone is ahead of you in the team, watch them like a hawk so you can understand why they're getting picked and you're on the bench. This knowledge is the foundation for developing targeted strategies to actually outperform them. And then secondly, develop targeted training. You want to tailor your training to specifically address the challenges posed by your competitors. Whether it's refining a particular skill or enhancing your physical conditioning, align your training with the goal of dominating those that you aim to surpass. And look, sometimes some people are just naturally better than you in certain aspects. And no matter how hard you work, you won't get to their level. So if that's the case, study their weaknesses deeply so that you can exploit those by becoming much better in those areas. People who say they don't worry about the competition are liars because the very elite study everything and everyone around them. They then use this to their advantage to stand out and surpass everyone. So there is now one last thing that we must talk about. And this is perhaps the most important because it's the one that really determines who makes it and who doesn't. To put this one into context, let's talk about two goats, Michael Jordan and Cristiano Ronaldo. When fans think of them, they think perfection. But this is a lie because you know what? Michael Jordan had a career field goal percentage of 49.7%. This means that technically he missed more shots than he made. And as for Ronaldo, despite all his scoring records, he averages a goal every 6.47 shots. That means that for every goal he scores, there are over five shots that do not result in success. Objectively, failure is an integral part of even the highest echelons of sport. Therefore, the final thing that you must do to make it pro is find your failure. So why should you embrace failure? Because it's the catalyst that propels athletes beyond their limits. It's the force that pushes them to take risks, go for opportunities that seem daunting, and ultimately, it's those daring moves that athletes get scouted, noticed, and remembered for. No one remembers those who play it safe because they don't stand out. Reaching the pro level is about gaining attention. And the only way you gain attention is to take risks. Not crazy, stupid risks, but educated, well thought out risks. Because it's only when athletes take risks that they have an actual impact. And once again, impact equals attention, which equals opportunity. And that's ultimately what you want in your efforts to make it pro an opportunity. And the only way you can then seize that opportunity is by being at peace with all outcomes. Knowing that you must take that difficult shot, even if there's a chance that you might miss it. Or knowing that you must try that difficult routine or movement, even though there's a good chance that you'll mess it up. To master the art of embracing potential failure, you should do three things. One, reframe your perspective. Understand that failure is not necessarily always a setback, but is simply a learning opportunity. Every missed shot, lost game, or last place finish is a chance to understand, adapt, and improve. Change your perspective from fearing failure to embracing it as a necessary part of your journey. Two, challenge yourself by setting goals that push your limits. These goals should be ambitious and carry an inherent risk of failure. They're goals that you might only have a 50% chance of making, but by reaching for the seemingly impossible, you not only grow as an athlete, but also open yourself up to unexpected opportunities. And three, watch this video next on how to conquer your fear of making mistakes.